Welcome to the Man Show. Rude. This is the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm Andrew, and this is Nona. The only thing that we're missing is a trampoline. Some dudes will know what I'm talking about. (laughs) It was uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla when we were in, like, middle school, elementary school age. They had a show on Spike TV, I think it was, or FX or something like that. Okay. And uh, their intermission, like when they would go to commercial, was just women jumping on trampolines. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, we have brought to you super special people. Ooh, what is going on with my laptop? Um, Who are going by the names of... uh, Cool guy and ballerina. Is that right? Cute. Cool guy and ballerina? Yeah. Or war daddy and ballerina? War daddy? Yeah. You gotta speak up, man. Okay. Here, <laughs> do that again. Speak up. Hello. No, say your name. I'm. War daddy. War daddy. <laughs> you. Introduce yourself. I'm ballerina girl. Okay. Aw, super cute. I like it. <clears throat> I just changed their voices for those, so that was not funny. <laughs> yeah, War Daddy. I want to be War the Daddy. Chipmunk. Yeah, War Daddy was the chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> and right. they are going to teach us all about World War II facts and Taylor Swift. So, if you're interested in either, stay tuned. I have a World War II fact that Nona knows nothing about World no, War II. No. History revisionists are now trying to say that we should apologize to Hitler. Yeah. No comment. They're psychopaths. Are these the same people who don't believe the Holocaust existed? Probably. But they are they are people that align with the same kind of values today as he did back then. And they live among us. And they vote. So anyways, we're about to have a cookout. Yep. And we needed to crank out an episode for tomorrow. She says crank out. So, <laughs> Ballerina Girl and War Daddy yeah. are going to assist in cranking out an episode. Yep. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. Take it away. Who wants to start? No, you can't say real <laughs> war, names. War, war daddy. daddy. War, war daddy. No, ballerina. Girl. All right, ballerina girl is gonna go first. So all you Swifties, this is our resident Swifty. Do you actually like Taylor Swift? Yeah. You actually do. Yes. yes. No, but like, if you got concert tickets, would you go? Yes. Would oh my you, god, yes. Would you pay for concert tickets? No. Do you know how much they cost? A lot. So, you want them for free? Or you want an adult to get them for you? No, but here I want it for free. Here's the here's the awesome thing. So, uh, (laughs) they're crazy expensive here in the states, but if we go over to Europe, they're only like two hundred, three hundred dollars. You could probably get away with the same thing as the plane tickets if you use a proxy and a VPN service. And no, no, no. I mean, just in general. So. A lot of people were figuring that out halfway through the summer and were doing full on European travel excursions going to Taylor Swift, but like seeing her in Spain or wherever. And the hotel, the flight and a whole week spent in another country was still going to be less than paying for a ticket here. But if you posted a meme and you're an American, you'd probably be placed under arrest while you're there. So, well, do I you, don't know anything about do that. Do you want to risk it? Yes. You would risk going to prison. I wouldn't. To go to a Taylor Swift concert. I'm not concert. on social media, so I would go no, to no, jail. No it's, no, it's not even current. <laughs> they're, they're going all the way back. So anything that's cached, anything that comes up in search results, because they're going to search you, they're going to search for you on the I'm internet. I'm a thousand percent going back to Europe, whether you want me to or not. They're going to revoke your dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. I'm gonna, going back. They're going <laughs> to revoke it for you posting memes. Okay. Anyways, 
All right, Miss Ballerina Girl, take us away with your Swifty questions for us and knowledge. Okay. So here's a fact about Taylor Swift. You gotta be nice and loud. Pretend that you're on the stage. Here is a fact about Taylor Swift. What is her full name? Taylor Swift. No. Is Taylor even her first legal name? Yes. Okay. So we're guessing what her middle name is. Yep. What goes good with Taylor? Elizabeth? Taylor no. Money Swift. What? No. <laughs> Taylor Money Printer Swift. No. Um, Taylor Federal Reserve Swift. Okay. Well, she was born in 89. Um, so Elizabeth. The, I already no. guessed Elizabeth oh. and she no, said no. 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 Um, so the names that were super popular in the late 80s were probably like Stephanie. No. Amanda. No. Um, Maria. Catherine. No, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It okay. starts with an A. Alexandra. I already said Amanda, so. Alexandra. No. Africa. What? No. Uh, Alice. Yes. Taylor Allison Swift. Oh, Allison. Allison. Okay. 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 Yeah. I can see that for a late eighties. Okay. War Daddy. Uh, what you got? Give us a, a World War II question or fact, please. Well, while he's skimming his book, I'm just going to quiz him. Okay. What was the day that the Germans surrendered to the U.S. or to the Allied forces? Do, 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 do. You can't. What? No looking it up. This is a this is a You're quiz. You're supposed to know this. Yeah, come on. You're our you're our World War II obsessed. You just told me the other day. You knew the date. But being put on the spot is hard. It is hard work being put on the spot. May seventeenth. I thought it was May seventh. You might be right. What is it? Possibly. I saw it in the book before I even looked in there. When did the Germans surrender to the Allies. Let's see what it says. May 7th, 1945. Okay. All right. War Daddy, what's your question or fact for us? You're supposed to be prepared, man. Uh, um. How about this? What's your favorite tank from World War II era and why? Uh, my favorite tank, my my personal tanks, in general, favorite personal tanks is a M4 Sherman, Sherman with rockets on it. He, he found that Lego on Amazon, by the way. Say we, it right we, into the mic, War Daddy, okay? Yeah. Uh, a M4 Sherman rocket tank with rockets with... So that's the next thing I have to order on Amazon. So, no. okay. So the price that he and I had agreed upon <laughs> mm -hmm. for his uh, whatever it was that he and I had negotiated a while back mm -hmm. for the um, M1 Grand and or the uh, MG42 mm -hmm. replica toy whatever. Right. Um, when the when it they was sold out or out of stock or whatever it was. Right. So we were looking up alternatives that were in that same price range and there's mm -hmm. one there's a sherman a regular one okay like, well there's actually two different versions there's a version these are like the knockoff legos on amazon by the way um there's a version that's like i don't know like 200 400 pieces or something like that and it's like 23 dollars. and then there's like a 1200 piece version that's slightly larger and actually more intricate that's like 63 dollars. okay and then there's that with this whole rocket assembly. Mm. War Daddy, is that what you really want? The rocket? But that doubles the price to like a hundred and four hundred and it says it said ninety-three. Are you sure? Yeah, it said ninety-three. I thought it was over a hundred. I hate the I hate the off brand Legos. The the hands to put the Legos in, they hurt the, so They are bad. they are but, not fun to put together. But, yeah. yeah. It's they not, do not click into place the way that Legos but, uh, click yeah. into place. Lego. But the first oh, one. But the first thing you're I supposed to be Danish. Come on. But the first thing I wanted was from you, Lego, which was from Star Wars. 
He wanted this thing that was like four hundred dollars. It wasn't four hundred dollars. It was one hundred and thirty six. That's so. It gross. was way more than that. All right, ballerina girl, swing us back around to Taylor Swift. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Guess yes. what a Grammy is. Guess what a Grammy is. It's an award. A type of award. It's a music award. How many Grammys has Taylor Swift received in her lifetime? Eleven of them. What? Eleven Grammys? Only eleven. Only eleven? Okay. Is that is it Grammy? Sure? Is it Grammy? You Google that to hold, verify. Hold, hold on, but okay, well, but is it Grammy the same way as like the Emmys and stuff are, where you can actually win multiple for like the same? I believe so. I believe you can receive it for genre, the um, actual song itself. Um, but this is what I wrote now. Yes. Grammys are a kind of. Trophy. They are awards by the Academy of Un- United States. But she has 14. She died. 14, not 14. 11. According to People Magazine. That doesn't say when it was dated, but let's see here. They click it. This is dated. Why did it take me all the way down there? It's dated February 5th of this year. Okay. So 14, that's still She's a lot. the only singer in history to win Album of the Year four times. Album of the Year. Congratulations to her. Do you know that um, you probably don't even know who RG3 is, but no. Robert Griffin III, um, pretty famous college quarterback. He was okay in the pros. He played for Washington for a while and a couple other teams. Gotcha. Um, he was working for ESPN. They just fired him. He had two more years left on his contract. Why'd they fire him? I don't know, but they replaced him with the Kel- the other Kelsey brother. Oh, the one that okay. Retired. Um, I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, he was playing for the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally blanking on his name. So they they replaced RG3 with with him for their NFL commentary show, and I didn't actually I didn't even realize that RG3 was working for ESPN. I thought he was working for Fox, but mm-hmm. sometimes they have like like some of these guys where they have. Um, like specific knowledge or information, mm-hmm. they might be interviewed on the other network. So I probably saw him on a Fox gotcha. episode of something thinking that he was an anchor for them, but he was really working for ESPN. Or he, I guess he's only been working for Well, I just want to know what years. he did to get fired two years early on his contract. I don't know, but everybody's been making fun of him because uh, he posted, he went to the Olympics and he posted a picture of he and his wife eating this giant croissant, like the size... Literally, you and I. I would love that. Okay, but his but his mouth was wrapped around the whole Uh, thing, and she was at the end like. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, War Daddy, take it away. Uh. Uh, Mama, it doesn't. You really don't have to put this much effort into it. It's not like this isn't school. It's not like you're actually being quizzed. Just give us give us something interesting, something that like really makes you happy. What was your what's your favorite weapon from World War II? Mm. Or what do you think was the most interesting weapon? And remember, say it directly into the mic, War Daddy. Yep. Come on, we know you know these things. This is your favorite Just topic. Yeah. Just being put on the spot is really hard. Just take a deep breath. Calm down. Just All right. While he is thinking about that, Miss Ballerina Girl, please give us another Swifty fact. How many world records has Taylor Swift broken? Well, did you just say that she... That's Grammys, but that's... Not world records. Mm, I'm going to guess... Three. And, okay, so here's 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 a question I'll pose to our audience. What do you consider a real world record? Because you have different subsets of world records. You have what is published in the Guinness Book of World Records. Then you have world records that people just arbitrarily make up. So I've seen... Um, a trend on YouTube 
of this this one commentator talking about video game world like video games from our era okay like they're like they're called speed run world records like how fast can you get through the game without right anything and then they like add in all these like qualifiers right like oh it's the fastest run but only if you have this setting turned on and it's the fastest run plus this setting plus only this controller and only this kind of tv like they just keep so like 50 people can have world records for the same thing, but just different qualifiers. That's really annoying. It's so like if we took your car to the drag strip, right? And we're like, Oh, we set the world record for being the first, (laughs) the first mom mobile. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why that jumped out to me is because my dad did that with uh, the excursion. The first year. So my my dad, my dad had the gas excursion. Our friends that own the Osceola drag strip, Mm -hmm. Um, they had the first diesel version, which I think came out the next year. Mm-hmm. And so they opened up the drag strip just for the two of them. Okay. And they drag raced them multiple times down the drag strip. Sounds really so, like, fun. You talk to like Cletus McFarland on mm-hmm. YouTube, does that kind of stuff all the time with like everything. I grew up doing that as a kid, but we didn't have cameras. Like, I mean, we could have had like the big VHS right, right. camera thing out there, which I did do a little bit when I was a kid. I would go anytime there was a sporting event for my siblings that Mm -hmm. I wasn't also participating in because either I aged out or we were in a different league or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would bring the camera and I would record like that was like the cool thing for me. And that's how my parents got convinced me to go. Anyways. So I I recorded all of my siblings. All right, ballerina girl. How many has she received? I guess three. 17. 58. Holy moly! In but what? Who's the who's the um, like the record body? Like, is it Guinness or is it just it we say? Said. I'm gonna see what 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 Google says. Okay. How many world? War Daddy, do you have a question or fact for us yet? Uh, he just looks tired. Remember, say it right into the mic. Cash. War Daddy. War Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. Turn it up to 11. Max power on your brain. All These go to 11. All the way to 11. Max out. There should be sparks shooting out of your ears. You got it? Yeah. All right. Okay. What's We're the, ready. What's the coolest, most badass, most amazing, incredible piece of technology, gun or otherwise, that came out of World War II that you think is awesome. He's staring at me on the other screen. <laughs> uh, if you just first thing that comes to your mind, like what is the coolest piece of technology? Was it a plane? Was it a tank? Was it a gun? Was it the bombs? What is something that just jumps out at you? The tanks. The tanks? Yeah. Which country specifically, or just all of them? All. All of them? Yeah. They're just all awesome? Yeah. In their own way? Yeah. But the Sherman was the best? By the way... Yeah, because you can... Cause, so I, I told you about, and I told him about the, uh, um, how the Sherman tanks were named after General Sherman. Right. And we thought that it was, he was a World War One general. I was way wrong. And that tree and the tanks, he was a... Civil War general. So it was before tanks even existed. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we all learned something yeah. today. In that tree, uh, in the Sequoia whatever mm-hmm. forest, was named after him. But then uh, there was uh, some, like, I don't know what it was. There was some entity that owned the land that it was on. Okay. And they wanted to name it, name it after, they renamed it after Karl Marx. And then when we took it back, we renamed it to General Sherman. Okay. So, yeah. Fuck, All right, Miss Swifty. <laughs> By the way, Swifty, according to this, according to Guinness World Records, so according to the body that we're going to say is official, 118 records. Holy moly. Yep. In what, though? Like, I need context here. Uh, on Wikipedia, 
we pull this up here. What do you think the first one's going to pop up? Ballerina girl. He's asking you. For what? What do you think is the first one? Okay, hold on, hold on. Before I read any of this off, there are records for holding records. So oh that's, my God! Yeah. <laughs> like having a record for the longest period of time is a record. Having the most records for a period of time is also a record. <laughs> like people will really... It's exhausting. People will really find ways. Um, the spearhead... Uh, Justin was trying to get the group to achieve the most comments on a Facebook post. And hey, so Justin. They did a test post trying to reach 10,000. And? Um, they got halfway there? I don't know. Because I, I don't have notifications turned on for anything at all. Mm-hmm. So I did my contribution. I counted to 69. And then I skipped to 420. And then I kept writing comments i was i was writing a story but instead of replying to myself i just kept adding to the story so that it was it was gibberish with what was your story about andrew um about how it was something it was something about oh it was about how i was getting my hair cut and how i had arrived early but my hairstylist wasn't ready yet. Do you hear this, guy? <laughs> so it's just, I'm here, but he's not ready. So I'm sitting in a chair and waiting and I'm bored. And maybe I'll get in the chair early, but I don't know. And each of these is a comment. All right, War Cash. Yeah. Or no, War Daddy. Sorry. I said Warcash that wrong. War Cash says YouTube channel that hasn't started. Well, it started. We own it. Just there's no content on it. So look <laughs> and up. today is a practice run. Yeah. So lots so, of practice. We're, War we're Daddy. Getting, we're getting him. War Daddy. Give us another fact. What is your favorite, favorite fact to share about World War II in general? To anybody who doesn't know anything about World War II, like your mama. That there was... That the Americans invented fake tanks. It's true. Fake tanks? Can you tell us more about fake tanks? Uh, they used these fake tanks to trick the enemies into shooting them. So oh. I, so, I, so they were a decoy? So, what? Yeah, so I, to me, I think they were meant for, like, the them to shoot it then the enemy will get spotted these were the oh. these are the precursor of what you know today as bounce houses ah! <laughs> they were they were inflatable yeah. tanks yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my god war daddy you want that for your birthday don't you an what? inflatable tank what you want an inflatable tank for your birthday don't you he looked at us like, yeah, but he didn't say it. <laughs> so yeah, but that's that's exactly what they were. So what they would do, that's it was crazy. it was a uh, it was psyops, psychological operations, mm-hmm. special operations. Um, they would take and they would have these things constructed, and because the fidelity of cameras and stuff like that wasn't that great, mm-hmm. all you had to do was make it convincing enough at a distance. Right, 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 right. So they would create these massive inflatables and like foam cutouts and stuff like that. And they would okay. place them, they would place them in these open fields. So it looked like they were staging an ambush or an assault. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then when the Germans would attack that position, they would one be wasting ammunition right. and arms and personnel and stuff, but they would also be exposing their defensive posture. So it was a, it was, yeah, it was a great thing, but yeah, that's unless somebody can prove me wrong. That's the precursor to modern day bounce houses. Well, War Daddy, thank you for that fact. I genuinely did not know that until right this moment. Yeah, and that was a good one. That was a really good one. So thank you. What you oh, what you got next? Swift. Miss Ballerina Girl, please share us mm. a Swifty. 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 Fact or Swift question. Arena. Did you know Taylor Swift wrote a novel when 
she was 12. Guess how many pages there were? 722. 420. 350 pages. So a big book for a 12-year-old. What called? do you think it was about? Mm-hmm. When are you going to get a copy of it? Was it ever published? No. So there's I, probably a copy circulating somewhere. No. Possibly. She'll, she'll now hold it till either she becomes irrelevant or she dies in her estate. Do you think she'll ever become irre- irrelevant? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think so. Yes, she will. I think she secured her foothold no. in. No. The Beatles the music are relevant. <laughs> That's because they're like all dead except for one. And she's going to be old and dead eventually too. Right. Garth Brooks I, I is meant, irrelevant. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he is not. You are crazy. No, no I'm not. Okay. Audience. Do you think Garth Brooks is irrelevant currently in 2024? I do. Where'd my go? There it is. He is not irrelevant. Yeah, he is. He's not even touring anymore. I found it. That's not... I wasn't saying actively creating new music. He paved the way for country music today. But he is now, not irrelevant. Now he's irrelevant, yeah. He is not irrelevant. Yeah, he is. Nobody cares. Everybody cares. Nobody cares. All right. Name a Brooks and Don song. Mm. Oh. Words are escaping me currently. Oh. I can I can play the lyrics in my head, though. Sure you can. The, the titles. Sure you can. She doesn't even know any of the most patriotic country songs of all time. She's not a real country fan. All right, War like, Daddy. I don't even like country, and I know who these people are, and I know their songs. All right, War Daddy. Uh. 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 In the Pacific Theater of War, when they used the Boeing B two bomber, they they the first thing they used was a cage with bats with bombs strapped on them and then the the bomb crate would open and the 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 fat electrician did a video about this and then they the bats just flew everywhere and yeah the bomb. they did all kinds of weird stuff like that using animals but yeah they they dropped they dropped a, a cage that would open up and let the bats out and they would just fly around and Detonate in random places. I don't really understand. <laughs> it's just you said bats in a cage. I understand so, that, so but I don't bomber, understand. The bomber would drop the crate, and the crate would open, mm-hmm. releasing the bats right. that had bombs strapped to them. Oh, I didn't hear that they were strapped to the bats. Yeah. I thought it was the bats were just released first no, and then the, bats, the bomb the bats was will, released. The bats One bomb. Fly in your house into your attic and right, stuff. Right, right. Okay, and then, now I understand. Yeah. I didn't hear that they were strapped to the bats. They that did, makes they did sense. all That's kinds crazy. of wild so one of the biggest and he knows. So it sounds like there was a lot of experimentation in not, World War II. Not just well I mean we're always experimenting. Mm-hmm. We have failed experiments with the recruiting. <laughs> but, okay. Um, they would. Th- there's a there's a major psychological aspect to it. And we've talked about this before, maybe not on the show, but um, to being able to logistically speaking, as a first world country, invade you and bring Taco Bell with us. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's massive mm-hmm. to the psychology of the enemy. Like not only are they on our land, but they brought fast food on day one. Mm-hmm. These these guys are going back and getting a shower and eating a Crunchwrap Supreme and having explosive diarrhea in their porta potties, and then the fact that we have such <gasps> other than other than other than Israel, I can't think, and I, I could be completely wrong, but Israel makes a big point to show how many women are in the IDF. And that's kind of a big thing for our military as well, because anytime we deploy, there's such a large number of women that there's additional logistics needs. Like you need feminine care products. You need all that other stuff that comes with being a woman 
to go with you. So the fact that we Please, can, Andrew, enlighten me. What does it take to be a woman? I'm not saying that I know. I'm saying that logistically speaking, they have to be able to source all of those things and bring them with you to be able to resupply you for your needs. That's an added thing. Like, um, War the, Daddy. Yeah, War Daddy. What was the, uh, what was it called? The, uh, the airlift? The, like, when they use, like, fake dummies and... No, 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 no. The, the Berlin airlift. You know about that, right? No. So, after World War II, because Berlin, within... So, you had East and West Germany. Mm-hmm. And then Berlin had East and West Berlin. And they wouldn't let people cross back and forth between. Right. So the U.S. every day for years was bringing in supplies. It was like the biggest logistics effort ever. And it just proved to everyone else in the world that you can try and cordon some shit off, but we're still going to get stuff in there and you cannot stop us. It's just it's about the imposing force. Like you're just always reasserting your dominance over and over and over and over and over. And it's okay. It's a big deal. So when you can when not only can you deploy a massive number of service members within twenty four to seventy two hours, which we can do, anywhere in the world, with all the tanks and equipment and supplies, and then you can also bring Taco Bell and Pizza Hut with you. And you can bring War Daddy. Is that why you want to enlist? Because Taco Bell and Pizza Hut is going to come with you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's it it's a big deal. Like because the enemy is like, the, in twenty four hours they just turned my country into theirs. Mm-hmm. It's not oh it's all rubble and everything like that. Like no, we literally stand up all these pop-up buildings and stuff like that temporarily. And now we have construction crews coming in 72 hours later and we're actually building buildings. And you're just like, Oh my God, they just built Wilmington in the middle of China. All right. (laughs) Miss ballerina girl, take us away with another swifty knowledge for our brain holes. Okay. She has three cats. Guess what her three cats names are. Oh, gosh. Cat, feline. I'm not going to say the third word because you're on the set. (laughs) Which we all know what that is. Um, So I have no idea what they're named. I think they're like old lady names, if I remember correctly. But Oh, Swifty over here. No, I just heard an interesting little fact, and I don't know exactly the logistics on it. But apparently in Deadpool 2... Ryan Reynolds possibly used their likeness on a shirt and she sued him, even though they are like BFFs in real life. Well, she wouldn't be suing him. She'd be suing the studio. And his comment was something to the effect of it really mm, sucks to be sued by your friend, (laughs) but it just happens in business. Well, it's not even her. It's not even him. Right, right. I understand. I understand. But like. It's her management team suing at the time Fox. Mm, Yeah. I don't know. But he was roped into it. But just like anything else. Did you see the the headline? um, It was like a week or two ago about Jeff Bezos boat. So it's a boat that he doesn't even own anymore. Okay. But it was headline worthy because he used to own it. So. The boat, I guess, like broke loose or something like that, and it hit another boat in like some port area. Okay. And I mean, it was like. Okay. (laughs) Super slow speed collision, right? How does that have anything to do with Taylor Swift's cats and Ryan Reynolds? I'm just saying it's the it's the clickbait headline because they ran the headline of. Jeff Bezos old boat or former yacht or yacht formerly owned by Jeff Bezos gets into wreck. You remove Jeff Bezos from owning the boat and they don't even run the story. It's only because 
she owned the cat's likeness that mm-hmm. they used her name and his name, but it was really Swifty management company sues sent 20th century Fox. It was not Taylor Swift suing Ryan Reynolds. It was these people and these people who they happen to be doing projects with. All right, War Daddy, take us away with another fact. Uh, you guys haven't even... Haven't yeah, you didn't even... Oh, I'm so sorry. Please enlighten us, ballerina girl, as to the names of Taylor Swift's three cats. Uh, one of them's name is Maddox. Okay. Olivia and Benjamin. Olivia is not really an old lady hmm. name. Meredith is kind of. That's been coming back. Olivia or Meredith? Meredith. I've heard a number of people our age ish name that. I think there was like one Meredith in my high school. Well, uh, what's his name? Demolition Ranch, Matt Character, his wife. That's her name, is Meredith. Hmm. Okay. Anyways. She goes by Mare. Which, and what's that show? Mare of Easttown. Isn't her name Meredith? Hmm. She's not a horse. <laughs> so. No. Wait. Mare of East. No, that's not her name. That was her title. She was the. Ma- the no, she wasn't. Her name was Meredith. M E R E. No, 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 no. Now I need to Google it. It's M E R E. That was her or title. M-A-R-E. It was. That's what they called. She was not um, the mayor. No, I didn't say she was the mayor. That's what they called law enforcement. No. No. Do you guys call the, the police horses? What? Exactly. Confusion over there. Wait, do I call, do we call the police forces Meredith? No, no. Do you call the the actual officers? I'm so wrong. Like a man walking down the street or in his car, do you call him a horse or do you say a cop? Cop. Do you know the difference between police slash cop, sheriff's deputy, sheriff, and state uh, state trooper? And yeah, you're right. Her name, no, but her name is Mayor. It's not Mary. No, no, no. I mean, her name is M A R E. That's it. It's not short for anything. Mayor Shahanan and Shahanan. It's obviously Irish. I can't pronounce it properly. Shanahan. Sure. No, no, there's not. It's only an N at the end. It's S H E E H A N. Shahan is not. That's not Irish. The whole family was Irish. Fake. <laughs> Stolen valor. <laughs> but now her name is actually Mare. <laughs> or Daddy. <laughs> it's yeah. been like six months since we saw that show, so. Do you know any names of any Medal of Honor recipients? No. You don't know a single World War II era Medal of Honor recipient's name? No. We just watched a show with one. Uh... We just we just finished watching the Pacific do, on HBO. Do, 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 Barcelona. Uh, Remember? Do, do, do. do you know who Audie Murphy is? He looks like he's really really thinking. I think he does, but he can't place him. What about? And of course, now I can't think. What? Give us another. What What do you think was the most important battle of World War II? The Battle of the Bulge. And what made that important? Probably because how much, like, uh, how much casualties? How many casualties there were? You think You think the importance is based on how many people died? I do not know. You don't know? Yeah. Like, well, seriously, though, like, if you had the ability to time travel, to fight in, or even just observe, like, you're just a ghost, and you can just watch, where would you want to go? Uh, would you go to D-Day? Yeah. You would? Yeah. What beach? Omaha. You would go to Omaha? Yeah. What is most significant to you about Omaha Beach? 
Because I could just uh, run and take a, like, um, run all the way to the, like, back end. Because it's, it's like, to me, it feels like it's, if I was there, it feels like to me, like it's one mile long, the beach. You want to exercise? Yeah. <laughs> In front of all the bunnies. <laughs> they do this uh, thing when you're in basic training. It's, uh, they fire... 50 cal tracer rounds, but like they tell you that they're only shooting like right above your head. And when you're in that like environment, that stress and like you're tired and haven't really eaten anything like that, like you believe it. They tell you all these horror stories about people standing up or putting their arm up and having it like blown off by the 50 cal round as it's zipping by just so that you won't stand up. But it's, you're just supposed to be doing a low crawl up this hill. And that's what I imagine with him saying that. It's him just, like, <laughs> and there's just 50 cal, whatever rounds zipping over his head. He's just like, get my exercise in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. War daddy. War daddy. <sighs> you have so much editing to do after you think this. Gonna, you think I'm going to do that? You have to remove his name. I have to pay somebody to do it. All right, Miss Ballerina Girl. We didn't mess up her name one time. No. Okay. What is Taylor Swift's favorite movie? Ooh. Brokeback Mountain. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? I love that. What? <laughs> what? Hmm. Um, can you give me a hint as to no. what type no. of movie no. is Take it? No, take a yes first. <sighs> All right. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, just based on her no. dating history. <laughs> no. Um... Miss March. What? Miss March. No. Return. All right, what is it? No, you have to guess again. I just guess. Quit cheating. Come That's on. not cheating, <laughs> I guess. Cheat, cheater. Come on. I guessed. One more. I did two, you do two. Two? I did two. Oh, you do bro, two. oh broke room. I, that was an offhand comment. That was not a real guess. Yes, it was. Okay. All right. Um, real guess. Harry Potter. Nope. Okay. I got another one. Um, oh, my God. I had it. Um, legally Blonde. Nope. The Shape of the Water. What That's that a mean? movie. I've never seen it. Then Google it. Google The Shape of the Water. I don't want to Google it. It sounds bad. The Shape of the Water. It. What? Really? What is it? It's like a weird. What does it look like? It's like a knockoff Aquaman. What? A knockoff Aquaman. What okay. What does it look like? like t- describe it. Just, just. Set in 1962 Baltimore, Maryland, the film follows a mute cleaner at a high security government laboratory who falls in love with a captured humanoid amphibian. So it's basically like a romantic love movie or something. It's Wait, like, is this the one where the girl is a mermaid? No, look at this. And Oh, just kidding. No. <laughs> point it at the get, point it at the screen. No. Uh, get Oh, I was thinking of Splash. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Where yeah. the girl is a mermaid yeah, and she like has to, to live that. in this guy's bathtub for a little bit. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> you don't watch understand. any culturally relevant movies, but you watch weird That came out in, in like probably movies? 1996. Sure. It's, it's, War da- yeah. it's War Daddy's turn. All right, War Daddy, take it away. Uh, in the Atlantic Theater, they... Uh, for, but before they, they, before they, they parachuted into the, uh, the France. France. Uh, they, they had the C seven. The what? C seventeen. Yeah, yeah, and then they put fake dummies with. Big sand dummies with sandbag with, no, with uh, 
uh, with a saying they did uh, decoy jumps. Yes, gotcha. They threw a bunch of sandbags with parachutes attached to them to try and throw them off. Gotcha. Just all like all of World War II basically is like the probably it's probably the last. Until we lose our technological advantage, it's probably the last like massive boots on the ground campaign that we'll ever have like that because you have all the cyber aspects of it, you have all the psychological warfare aspects of it, you have all this, all the other nonsense that goes along with it. So, inflatable tanks and stuff like that. What were you starting to say? Uh, and this is how the U- the United States got the first through uh, Normandy. Because there's these different things, like different groups of infantry and artillery things and tanks. So, they, but when we were attacking the infantry, there's only, like, for the infantry, there, there was only, like, yeah, a million of them. Of them but they were know. getting, like, to too much casualties, so they had to to the radio to one the nearest support thing, and it said it took 30 minutes. What Uh, took 30 minutes? For, like, the support thing. Like, all the men coming to support them in tanks. And, and, yeah. So... A lot of that operation, the airborne units were supposed to be dropped in behind enemy fortifications. So the majority of the defensive posture for the Germans was along the coast. So the paratroopers were supposed to jump in behind enemy lines and then come up behind them and take out all the different secure positions so that the amphibious landing could come onto the beach unencumbered didn't happen very well in most places because they either the planes were shot down or they had to let guys jump early or they were completely off target because of winds. Like basically it was just a giant clusterfuck. But at the end of the day, it's one of the most glorious moments in American history. Thank you. War daddy. Yeah. That was very knowledgeable. I still, I completely forgot about the inflatables. Like, Psy, like, PsyOps, they're, uh, they're new commercials. I think I've showed you at least one of them, one of the two. They're super creepy. They're so creepy. What? It's the PsyOps, they're, they're like recruitment ads. No, I don't know. They're what you're super about. fucking creepy. Look them up. It's, uh, I can't remember. I can't think of the name of the unit now. But anyways, if you look up like PSYOPs commercials, U.S. Special Operations, Psychological Operations, whatever commercials, there's two of them that'll come up. It's like Ghost in the Machine, I think is what it's called. Look them up. It's fucking trippy. That's the intent, though. It's, we are everywhere. You know, we are nowhere. We are among you. You'll never know. All right, ballerina girl. We help wrap, us out. Yeah, wrap it up. Help us out one, yeah. with one last Swifty fact or question. What is Taylor Swift most known for? Besides her music, music in general, or what do you mean? What is she most like known for? Like a specific song, a specific album, a specific event, or just. The fact that she's famous. Like, what is she most known for? For being a singer. No. I thought it was for being a singer, too. Writing songs, specifically? Nope. Okay, what? Heartfelt. So, is that specifically is an that album song? or a song? It's not a song or an album. And she's just known for heartfelt. I don't get it. What does it mean? You have to be able to explain it. 
Go- it said was Google it? Taylor Swift heartfelt to verify. Why am I having to put in so much it's labor It's probably today? also a song, too. I was guessing Shake It Off as, like, her number one song. It's for her ha- heartfelt and personal songwriting connection with the audience. So it's... Uh, the connection. Okay, yeah. I I did know that, that all of her songs told a story. Um, Miss Ballerina Girl, I do have a question for you. Yes. Do you know why her concerts have turned into a um, friendship bracelet exchange? Why, um, why is that a thing with Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift concerts? I, I don't know why, and I would like to know why. Uh, if you don't know, it's okay. I don't know that much, but I, all I know is that some kids, whenever they go to like concerts, to her concerts, uh, there's like some other people next to her, and they like, like the exchange bro- Taylor Swift bracelets. The rubber, like Livestrong bracelets. No, they're all handmade. They're like yeah. what Miss Ballerina Girl makes here and gives to her friends. But people will go to the concerts with like twenty on their wrist to well, pass them out and exchange well, to other people. People go in with out bracelets on and then they come out with like 20 of them on their arms. So you can go in with nothing and that's come the, out with... That's the pores being felt bad for. I I thought it was that you were there to exchange, but I don't know. Like I, I genuinely don't understand and where when did that start? How did it start? I want to know. War Daddy. Yeah? I have a question to close us out. Get close to the microphone. Okay. Ready? Yeah. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck cut chuck wood? 700 pounds? Yep. Smart Bad boy, moves. Mr. War Daddy. Thank you so much, Ballerina Girl and War Daddy. Like and get subscribed. Get subscribed. Please just subscribe. Get Don't subscribed. Don't get subscribed. I have one more question. Okay. Uh, the... The British, when they were go- landing on the uh, beaches, they used these, like, things, like a wheel, and then put rockets onto them, but they didn't really work out. It's, like, those things right here. What in the world? They're called, they're called it. Was it supposed to, like, detonate mines or something? Yeah, it's supposed to detonate mines, but it didn't very work out. Yeah, it looks like it's just looks like it's just gonna sink in the sand. Looks like a giant paperweight. Is that what those uh tubes are on the side of the spokes? Yeah those are rockets. And it's like one of those um you know those things you sit on the ground on fourth of July and you light it and it spins it's like that's the war version of it. <laughs> okay, then. On that note. Good to know. Good to know. Yep. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.